Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're taking a closer look at the temptations that people have to see if we can figure out why we're tempted to commit sins. People generally commit sins because they're after something they want, and they sin in an attempt to get it. So we're looking over the things people want. Today, pleasure. Again, let's begin with a usable definition of this term. To understand what sort of thing pleasure is, almost every definition can be strung together and provide a more complete picture. Definition. A state of gratification, sensual gratification, frivolous amusement, and or a source of delight or joy. In short, a pleasure is delight, amusement, or gratification, usually obtained through one of our senses, though not always. For instance, dwelling on past experiences, or imagining positive experiences, can be a source of pleasure, but without the senses being involved. It would be purely a form of mental gratification. Typically, however, pleasure begins outside of yourself, or is a reaction to something going on in the world outside of your mind. These events cause us to experience sensations which, for us, feel good. Some of the most basic forms of pleasure would be the sight of a beautiful sunset, the sound of a type of music that we enjoy, the smell of roses, or of something else that we like the smell of, the taste of our favorite food, or the feeling of softness that comes from touching a pillow. These experiences all send sensations into us which, if we enjoy them, provoke a pleasant reaction in our brains. Sensations of pleasure are among the most intense positive feelings that we have, but there is, of course, a problem with them. That problem is that because they come from circumstances or events in the outside world, the pleasure fades when the event fades. For instance, the flavor of ice cream disappears when you finish it all or put the rest away. In order to keep the sensation going, we need to repeat the pleasurable action or event over and over, which gets in the way of us being able to do more helpful or constructive things, and even if we do repeat the same pleasurable action, like, say, watching a movie we love, the sensation of pleasure associated with that action will still gradually diminish over time. This is what we usually call getting sick of it. Way, way, way back in episode 40 of this series on the topic of joy, I contrasted pleasure with joy by saying that joy doesn't come from the senses. It's a feeling of inner delight and gladness which makes you feel better regardless of your circumstances, heightening your appreciation of good times and softening the blow of tragedies and suffering. It's not as intense as pleasure is, but it lasts much longer and is therefore more useful. Joy is part hope, part gratitude, part deeper appreciation of the good things we have, useful for giving us the strength to go on through times of trouble, even when it isn't totally fulfilling, a very practical thing to hold on to. However, because joy is so much less intense than some pleasures are, it's often ignored by people who are pleasure seekers. A pleasure seeker might say that focusing on joy, rather than pleasure, is just an attempt to make the best of a bad situation, and they're not entirely wrong about that. It's not good that human beings have such a hard time holding on to the most intense positive feelings, but that doesn't mean that the temptation to pursue pleasure can't still be dangerous. Simple pleasures, like the warmth of sunlight or a cool breeze on your face, can usually be enjoyed without any major sacrifices being involved. But man-made pleasures are different. Things like a good book, an ice cream cone, or a warm bed are pleasurable and require human effort to produce, which is why they cost money. A person who becomes obsessed with experiencing these kinds of pleasures can sometimes go broke trying to fulfill them, and in any case will spend much of their time trying to fulfill their desires for pleasure, which makes it harder for them to find time for the important things. That's not even considering the additional burdens that people encounter when they take pleasure in chemically addictive substances, or worst of all, in causing harm to others. Obsessions with things like strong drinks, drugs, or sex are often taken to extremes by pleasure-focused people to the detriment of other people in their lives and those around them. So, in dealing with pleasure, the dangers to avoid are excessive waste of time, excessive waste of resources, addiction, and disregard for the well-being of others. We should moderate our use of time and resources in pleasurable activities to make sure we still have time to get more important things done, and to help those in our lives who need it, 
keep control of ourselves so that if we need to distance ourselves from certain pleasures we can, and always remember to sacrifice for others as we would for ourselves, keeping charity in focus and remembering to try to model our actions after the sacrifice of Jesus. However, despite all this, pleasure itself is not a bad thing. So why is it so imperfect? Why are the pleasures of this life so costly and difficult to maintain? What was pleasure actually supposed to be like in God's original plan? The ultimate fulfillment of what we call pleasure and every other positive sensation is called the beatific vision, the experience of being fully in the presence of Almighty God and receiving all that he gives us. This is the way in which human beings were meant to experience pleasure, as a constant unending stream of both depth and intensity coming exclusively from God himself. Because of the fall of Adam and Eve, the world's relation to God was damaged and this connection broken. However, there's nothing broken that God can't fix, and he will, if we do our part. The pleasures of heaven are both more lasting and more intense, and don't distract us from God due to how obviously they come to us from him. Getting to heaven is a big challenge, involving a lot of pain, but there is no pain in the presence of God, and since heaven lasts forever, it's definitely worth the effort. Furthermore, because God is truly infinite, the pleasures that he can provide are as well, which completely overpowers our ability to get sick of it, no matter how much time passes there. The same is true of those who crave pleasures of many different types, or long for a wide range of different kinds of experiences. There's no desire for anything so large that God can't vastly exceed it. I believe that pleasure is meant to serve not as a temptation, but as a signpost pointing to God, always a clear indication that we shouldn't be fully satisfied with only the lives we have, and a reminder of the God-shaped hole that each of us has in our natures, our need for the infinite, which can only be satisfied by Him. Next time, The Temptation of Security. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.